Hello, uh, this is a quick look at my hobby project to make an API for the abandonware game Simpsons Hidden Run. Uh, so you might have heard of AlphaStar and PySC2. Those are two Google research projects to teach DeepMind how to play StarCraft 2. And just for fun, I'd like to do the same for Hidden Run. Uh, perhaps automate finding glitches, optimizing strategies, finding new routes around the map and so on. Uh, to do this, I'm using the instrumentation framework Frida, and all of my code is written in TypeScript. But you can write scripts in either JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, so one fun thing about Frida is that you can use Chrome DevTools to develop your code. Uh, so let's take a look at that. If I use Python to inject Frida into the Simpsons game, you can see it's been initialized, and after a few seconds, DevTools should become active. There we go. Um, so this works how you might expect if you've ever used DevTools before. Um, it includes uh, de debugging tools like breakpoints, uh, call stacks, and you can examine the source and so on. Um, and you can use all of the standard free, standard Frida APIs. Um, we can look at the process ID. We can enumerate modules. Um, but because the Simpsons API is also injected into the process, we can also query some of the game's internal state. So let's get the object for our avatar, which is Bart, as you can see on the screen. And to do that, we need the avatar manager. And the static method get avatar. And now using DevTools, we can see all of the available properties and methods that we can query. So let's take a look at our position. And those are our x, y, z coordinates. Um, and we can also look at our velocity, which I expect to be zero because we're not moving. There we go. And as you can see, we're on foot. But if we were in a car, we could also query that. Um, so I've had to zoom into DevTools here so that you can read the code. But usually, you would see things like you all the standard debugging tools that let you set up the call stack and breakpoints and so on. Uh, so one nice feature of DevTools is live expressions. And we can create our own debugging console. So let's take a look at that. If I paste these two expressions uh, into live expressions, you can see as you move around the map, they're updated in real time. So um, it's not just uh, attributes that we can query, we can also modify those attributes. So let's try that right now. If we get a copy of our character object, and let's just check. That's us, that's Bart. Um, so let's try changing our position. And to do that, we need to use the method relocate. And let's set a new XYZ position. Uh, and let's use our current position, which I'm reading from the, uh, the live expression. Uh, but let's add 10 to our height. That's our Y coordinate. And we don't need these. And there you go. You can see we jump 100 feet in the air. Um, there are other attributes we can query, of course, like uh, at the, our character's bounding box. That's a box 3D object, which has a uh, which is made of two vectors, the min pos and the max pos. There you go. Uh, or our bounding sphere. And of course, the sphere has a radius. So we can see the size of the sphere that surrounds our, the character object. Um, but this wouldn't be much use if we could only um, query uh, our character. Of course, we can query all the objects around us in the world. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to use the intersect manager. Uh, so let's get a list of all the objects within uh, 10 distance units of us. Uh, and we want 
uh, dynamic physics elements uh, from our position. And let's say 10 units. Uh, so this reserve array is an internal data structure, but we can convert it into a JavaScript object. There we go. Um, but I can't read that, so let's use uh, let's use the console to turn that into a list of strings that we can understand. And to do that, we use for each and the arrow operator. As uh, so you can see, the three objects it found is our character, the phone booth you can see in front of us, and there's a bench behind us in the park. Um, so we can see that element one here is that phone booth, so let's extract that element. And let's check we've got the right one. Looks good to me. Uh, so we can query this object attribute now, such as, of course, its position. Uh, but we can also manipulate it. Let's try. Uh, let's try applying some force to it. And to do that, we would use apply force um, from our direction. And let's say magnitude ten. And there it goes. Um, so, of course, we also wanted to uh, simulate input with the game so that we can control it. And to do that, you would use the input manager. Uh, and this lets us uh, control the game as if we were at the keyboard. Uh, so let's do that right now. Uh, and let's get a controller and get mappable. There we go. Uh, and let's simulate some keyboard some keyboard input. Uh, let's see, let's do simulate key press and all the names of the keys are in the mappable object. And let's jump. And of course we can move around. Uh, you can also toggle whether keys are down or up and uh, any other combination or move the mouse or move the camera and so on. Um, so uh, this wouldn't be much use unless it was scriptable, and we can do that. So let's walk towards that phone booth, and um, we can do that uh, while our position, uh, and let's get the distance, and let's do the phone, um, and let's say while it's greater than 1. Right, so this should move us forward until our distance from the phone booth is uh, is less than one. There we go, and we stopped as soon as we reached it. Um, so we can also spawn some some, some objects. So let's try that. Uh, let's do bar queen. and then we can spawn. Some coins around us. Let's use spawn instant coins. And I want to know where, so let's use our position again. And let's say 10. And there they go. So let's take a look at a script. This is an example script that will choose a random nearby object, try to move towards it, and if it reaches it, it'll try to kick it. Uh, and it'll keep doing that for every object on the map if you let it wrong, uh, if you let it run long enough. Um, so I'm using Vim here, but you can also use uh, Visual Studio Code, which has built-in support for TypeScript. Uh, if you prefer an IDE, it has built-in completion and so on. Uh, so let's see this in action. You just specify the name of the script on the command line. Yeah, so you can see he's chosen a bench. He's going to try to find it, destroy it. 
and then after a few seconds, you should uh, find a new, choose a new object, and it's chosen another bench. He's trying to reach the center of the object, but he'll give up if he can't get too close. There we go, and he should choose another object. He's trying to chase that garbage can. There we go. And it'll keep doing this forever. And I've got one other example. You can modify the UI. Everything you see, the minimap uh, and the mission indicators and all the text is all controllable. Um, so this is just a hello world. You can see it just adds hello world and then adds it to the, to the FE layer. And we can win that. There you go. Uh, and I guess that's it. Thank you.